guys, Matt, welcome back to the shop, and this is just a quick, um, I wanted to point something out, just because a video by someone who does chemistry for a living, <laughs> um, Thunderfoot, so a lot of you might have seen Thunderfoot, now you might agree with Thunderfoot's political stuff or not, it doesn't matter, his chemistry stuff is fucking awesome, um, but this is in relation to the Evans thing, now the Evans bang on, bang, 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 bang on about uh, cavitation, and that Evans won't cavitate. And look at this giant beaker at 120 degrees of Evans. There's no cavitation bubbles or all shit. That is not cavitation. <laughs> right. Thunderfoot's video describes it a lot better. I'll put a link in the description. Go and watch that because it's all about kettles. But it's also a good point is that. Um, the bubbles that you get in your Coca-Cola. Because you've dissolved uh, carbon dioxide, CO2 into your bottle. Um, the bubbles that you get just saying like fizzy wines and champagnes and shit like that and the bubbles that you get in kettles are not cavitation what is cavitation cavitation is when you have a liquid so let's say we have a box like this with some liquid in this is completely full and imagine you could stretch this box out um, a good example is uh, your shocks or hydraulic cylinders if you can stretch this out quick enough without any more liquid filling in um, little pockets appear and Thunderfoot has another video where he shows you a uh, vacuum vessel with some water in it and he gives it a shake and these bubbles appear and disappear and they appear and disappear at, he has to use his high speed stupidly fast so this bubble here basically especially if it's in oil is a void it generally has nothing in it pretty much um, some of the oil could boil but it's generally not quick enough so these bubbles appear and then they collapse and they collapse with the outside pressure. And there's a, a, a photo, a, I can't really call it, it's a photonic effect. Photonic. A photon effect where basically you can actually get, I can't remember really call it, but basically it collapses and you get flashes of light. That much energy is released that a photon shit out. Um, and this is what can do damage basically. This massive collapse sends a shock wave out. So it's, a, it's an implosion and then a shockwave pisses out. And if this is on the surface of a metal, it can literally, like um, ultrasonic cleaning almost, but more aggressive, uh, it can actually start to pit the material. Um, the bubbles that you get in a boiling fluid, as Thunderfoot says in his video, is uh, regions, what they call nucleation. And Evans on their website bang on about that, but they... They basically talk about nucleation and boiling in regards to cavitation, which it is not. Look at the bottom of your kettle. The thickness of the steel on the bottom of these stain these hidden element kettles does not erode away and your kettle is fucked. It oxidizes. Usually elements oxidize because they're boiling water and it's high energy and blah 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 blah. But um, you are not pitting through your kettle. <laughs> with cavitation because it can happen quite um quite quickly pumps and a lot of people are going to say the outlet of a pump um basically you're pushing out quickly and sometimes the shear strength of the material causes bubbles to form the collapse propellers some um i was talking to this uh, with a guy at work another engineer and he was saying that there's actually torpedoes that use a nose cone um, that causes cavitation so there's a lower pressure region so the torpedoes can be quicker um, which is quite cool, I didn't know that. Um, but propellers get cavitation on, I'll show you some pictures of cavitation on the sides of blades. Basically the blade is passing through, it's pushing the water out of the way and a void appears behind it because the water literally can't basically fill that void quick enough. Um, in a sense you could almost call this like almost like flow separation and stuff like that. Um, but with air it's, there's a lot of lower energies and all the rest of it. And you can have vacuums and vacuum regions and lower and higher pressure regions. With liquids, because the liquid has quite a high pressure, when these bubbles collapse, there's an awful lot of, you know, it's, it's at the speed of sound and there's an awful lot of um, energy involved. And this um, can erode, you know, <laughs> cavitation erosion is a real thing. You see this in diesels and someone's going to say, ah, but in diesels, well, in diesels, the reason why you see cavitation is because um, it's all to do with acoustics. Um, with diesels, in petrols, we try and stay away from knock. Diesels are almost, it's nearly knocking all the time. It's a bit of a fuzzy area exactly where it is. Um, 
But diesels are, in, in a sense, knocking all the time. That's how they work. And when you have a long cylinder liner and you have all this knocking going on, um, your cylinder liner all, almost acts like a tuning fork because it's usually longer, because we have longer strokes in diesel. And um, them two things coupled together can cause cavitation in the cooling fluid. Uh, we looked at that pump, that plastic pump, which would be eroded a lot quicker than something, say, that was metal. Um, and that was 100,000 miles, and there's no cavitation marks on that. I can pull out every single pump I've got in all these bikes here, and there'll be no cavitation marks in there. Boiling, and you say, well, that is a pump, and there might be slight cavitation. Generally, them pumps aren't going fast enough, and generally water, because it has a lower surface tension than just, say, oils and stuff like that, it can respond to these voids being produced. Um, with diesels, on the other hand, like I say, it's not actually at the pump that this happens with a diesel. Um, it's actually at the cylinder liners where you have wet liners where the interface between the cylinder wall because you've got this pinging, you know, because you've got this detonation going on, this high energy acoustics and all the rest of it. But I just wanted to point out that Evans bang on about it stops this corrosion and blah blah blah. Evans is actually more likely to cavitate because it's thicker. Basically, because it's thicker, its viscosity is higher. If a bubble does form, then uh, it's actually heavier, which means that it has to accelerate and it's obviously got its inertia to resist that and so on and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll show you. So what we'll do is we'll try and put um, Evans through a hydraulic pump and actually see compared to something else that's thinner. And we'll actually see how much Evans, you know, does it make cavitation worse? Um, stuff like that. But yeah, uh, what I'm all I'm going to say is I'm not going to go through all the same ground of superheating um, and um, oxygen coming out of suspension or nitrogen and stuff like that in water. Uh, I'll let Thunderfoot do that. So go and look, watch his video. It's really good because it, you get uh, it's a double whammy video. You get to learn about why kettles make noises at certain temperatures and then they actually get quieter as they start to boil. And it's all about this cavitation, superheating, bubble forming and so all sorts of nucleation. Blah, 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 blah. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.